to be here at Midwest Annie Mae. And you all have to know that I've been mispronouncing it for ages. I've always called it Annie Mae. Annie Mae. But who knew? So, I figured that you all might have some questions. Or I can just, you know, talk a little bit about how I got the gig. How I got to do Portal and Team Fortress 2 and Half-Life 2. Would you all like that? Yeah. Okay, all right. So, as you can tell, I'm an old woman. And my husband, oh I am, I am. My husband said, get a demo tape, a voice demo tape. Get a demo tape, get a demo tape, get a demo tape. Finally, in 2002, I went to a wonderful woman named Veronica Weichel and her husband Steve, and they put together a voice demo tape for me of my voice. And I used different accents, and I sold the Lexus automobile, you know, use that kind of voice. So, but, you know, my training was in acting, but I finally got a voice demo because everything I had done was on stage, live theater, singing and acting. So I got a demo tape, and I will tell you, and I don't want to sound sexist, but this is the fact, in Seattle, where we live, right at that time, uh, all the technology was changing. And it used to be that voiceover artists actually went into a studio with the client there and did the audition. You auditioned in front of people. And right around the beginning of this century, uh, the technology all changed. And everyone was required to make recordings at home of auditions and, you know, put them on MP3 files and send them into the client so the client could choose the actors that way. And in Seattle, in 2002, there weren't many women who had switched over to the new technology. And my husband had already done this. So when I got my voice demo, our agent started to send my voice for, for clients to hear because we had the new technology. So, you all are absolutely up on everything that's current today. But look down the road a little bit when you're 58 years old like I am. And you all have to promise me that you're going to stay up to date. I have an iPhone. I'm so excited. I've just started texting. I, I'm starting to do all of these things now. So, but it's because, you know, my husband has said, no, 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 Ellen, we got to stay up to date. We got to stay up to date. So you all are up to date right now. Stay up to date. Stay up to date. So anyway, uh, we got auditions sent to us by our agent in emails, and we would record the auditions, and I recorded an audition for Half-Life 2. I didn't even know what it was, but I did the audition, and that was my first computer game was Half-Life 2, and I went in, recorded it. I also went in and recorded the announcer for Team Fortress 2. I love that character. She, I, I just think she's great. And I love the artist rendering, which Valve actually bought. A fan did uh, animation, anime, anime rendering of what she thought the announcer looked like, and Valve liked it so much that they bought it, they paid her for it. And it's so wonderful because she's, you know, pencil thin and has that gray streak and she's chain smoking and she sounds like this. <laughs> Which I think is lots of fun. So I did that voice. And then I got sent a sort of, so I knew these people at Valve, it was Valve, and I got sent a sort of odd audition and they sent me a computerized voice sample because they had been working on this game called Portal, which was based on the game Nabacular Drop, which the DigiPen students had done. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Well, uh, Gabe Newell, who is the president of Valve, 
Valve had been asked to come to DigiPen to, you know, adjudicate students' projects. And some students presented him with this game called Nabacular Drop, and he liked it so much that he hired all of them on the spot. On the spot. And it's a wonderful Cinderella story. But it's because Gabe is a very imaginative person, and he saw that this team of students at DigiPen were a team. They worked together as a team. And that's what it takes to put a computer game together. It's really a team of artists. So he hired all of them. So Nabacular Drop became Portal. And it didn't have much of a budget. And they realized that the computer voice that they had been using to create the game was under copyright to another company. And they couldn't use that voice without paying a whole bunch of money, which they didn't want to pay. So they sent this audition around and they asked all the actresses to sound as much like this computer-generated voice as they could. And I won. <laughs> I'm the heartless computer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, but that's really what they wanted, because they wanted this computer-sounding voice. So, I went into the studio and started recording things in 2006, and they would play this computer-generated voice for me, because they had all the dialogue in this computer-generated voice. I also saw it on the copy in front of me. I mean, it was also written on paper so that I could read it. But they would play this prompt for me of the computer, sound like this. And then they would say, okay, sound like this, but be a little sad. Or sound like this, but be a little angry. So they were asking me to sound like the computer, but they wanted me to do it with emotion, which they couldn't have gotten from a computer. So that's why they had to hire a real live actor. So I was aware that it was for a game, and the principal writer on the first Portal game is Eric Wolpaw, and he is a very funny, very talented guy. And, you know, I'd be reading along the copy that they had me to say, and I'd just start laughing. It was fabulously clever, and I love it at the end when GLaDOS goes crazy and she starts spouting cake recipes and, you know, just a random facts. I like the random fact voice, too. And then they decided, see, because they could only afford one actor, then they decided that they needed another voice for the turret. So, you know, I was in the studio. Thank you, yes. Yes, Liz. I, I uh, tried a couple of different things in the studio, and they said, oh, we like that one. We like that. And I love the little turrets. I think they're so sweet. So, <laughs> oddly enough, you know, the creation of Portal and Portal 2, it, it, they really got sort of a grandmotherly type to come in and, you know, do these recordings, which I think is so funny. But, you know, I've done, I've done an interesting thing recently. Um, one fan wrote Valve, and he got Valve to do this. And he had me record the proposal to his girlfriend, proposal of marriage. So... So I'm hoping that I'll have another happy couple. You know, I can, I can put the, you know, the notch on my belt, as they say, for a happy couple. So, um, you know, did the first game, and of course, my favorite part of all the games were the songs. They knew that I was a singer, and they, uh, I should say, Eric Wolpaw and Kim Swift, were after Jonathan Colton to write something for Valve. They didn't know what. But the way things work out, uh, it's ended up that Jonathan Colton was gonna write a song for Portal. And they weren't even sure where they were gonna put it. 
but they sent Jonathan Colton sort of the game as it was, and he played it, and he made discoveries about it, and he came up with this wonderful song, 